Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. The MCG yesterday, the Collingwood Football Club won seven in a row. They're only a game off top spot now. Can you believe that? Craig McRae doing great things, Kane. Well, they were challenged, weren't they? North Melbourne, it was their best performance of the year. I thought on the back of losing 13 in a row, and you're thinking, hang on a minute, they're going to get this done eventually, as we've spoken about, Collingwood ran over them. Thought North Melbourne probably had the best four players on the ground, which is saying something. But joining us now is a player who is in very good form. We'll call him the big Australian now. Mason Cox is with us. Coxie, thanks for your time. No worries. Thanks for having me on, boys. How was the mood in the change rooms after the game? I mean, any time you win seven in a row is a significant achievement in a hard AFL season. But was it jubilant or were you a bit flat after the game? A uh, bit of both, I think. Um, I think, obviously, North Melbourne played a heck of a game and credit to them. And um, I think we kind of looked back and we've had probably four or five of these games now that have been really close that we've been able to, to close out. And especially for a young group like we've got, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. You know, people like Nick Dacos and Ollie Henry over the past few weeks have been really standing up in some clutch moments and um, yeah I think after that was a bit of a sigh of relief is probably the biggest thing. Just looking at some of the highlights it was a pretty good game of footy yesterday but they had you at centre bounce didn't they? I mean you just didn't seem to get any drive or any continuity out of the lineup that you had in there what were those discussions like with the midfield group? Yeah we just needed to be a bit harder inside like they were getting so much center clearance off it and putting pressure under our backs but uh, there's something we'll work on this week I'm sure and um, it was good enough I think where we have a lot of things that we need to uh, to work on. We'll get some good uh, vision out of the week. But, um, yeah, with, with stuff like that, you know, you're not going to be able to, to win games if you can smash that center bounce and lose the territory right away from the very beginning. I heard Scotty Penabry Mason say after the game, at three-quarter time, Craig McRae said, don't look at the scoreboard, stay in the moment. Was that a real feature of three-quarter time? Because uh, you could have easily been uh, you know, a bit scarred by what had gone on in that first three quarters. Yeah, it's, it is. I mean, he mentioned it before the game. He said, you know, play every 30 minutes. Um, and it's really play it minute by minute. So we talked about halftime playing the first 10 minutes and trying to get off on the right foot. And, um, and that three, uh, going into the fourth quarter, um, I think we may have had three kind of right in a row. And then we kind of got a little bit of confidence up and everything else. And it went from there. But, um, yeah, I don't think really – I'll talk to the players a lot. And there's not really a feeling ever in a game where we kind of – feel a bit nervous or lost it's always kind of you know move on to the next thing and uh, stick to the process and stick to the uh, the role you need to play within the team so it was kind of it's weird I think in past you've probably gotten stressed out in moments like that but I feel like there's a real calmness to the group where some certain moments like that kind of happen and everyone kind of looks at each other gives each other a head nod and moves on. Mason you've been part of a team that, that has made the grand final before you're on a massive surge right now it's a very different team it's a different feel but do you feel that something very special can happen this year? I've been in footy a little bit. And I know not to, have to bring the F word up at the, uh, this time of year, so I'm not going to even say the GF word. Um, but, uh, no, it's uh, we're enjoying it. You know, I think we're almost like seven games now in a row, and uh, we're really. I think that was a bit of a, uh, you know, a bit of a not a shock, but um, it was, you know, like one of those games you maybe needed to to put us back in the line uh, over the weekend or weekend, and uh, hopefully, like I said, we can take the lessons out of it, and move on from it, but. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been a really enjoyable experience myself coming back into the team, getting to play with Darcy Cameron and The Rock and get more time into The Rock. And it just makes you feel, I guess, a bit more uh, involved in some of the games quicker whenever you're actually in the middle of getting your hands on it. Mason, after a few injuries, you just t- talked about going back into The Rock. Has that been the turnaround for you? Because your last five or six weeks has been pretty good. Yeah, like I said, I think it just gets you more into the game. Um, myself, Darcy, we really kind of split that role and uh, take ownership in it. And um, I think we really enjoy, I guess, playing with each other in that sense where uh, we can both kind of go forward, we can both go into the rock, and it's not really a stress, I think, or you know, lack of ability whenever one person goes to a certain area or the other. Uh, Darcy's been really good in front of goals. He's been playing really well on the rock. He's been a hell of a, uh, hell of a you know, year so far, and he'll continue into that. He's, uh, he's a person we put a lot of faith in, and... He's a, he's a really good player, man. He's, uh, he's a person that's uh, still young in his career. I think he's under 50. I think he's 43 games, I want to say, now. Um, but he's, uh, he's looking to be a superstar of the competition. Mason, I was only told yesterday, we interviewed Darcy Moore pre-game, who didn't play yesterday, and he said you have a number of pair of glasses or goggles or whatever you want to call them, to, depending on the conditions. So how many different pairs do you have uh, to be suitable for different conditions? I think I've probably got 13 pairs in my box, and I might have, I think I counted 45 different lenses. Um, so it depends on, you know, well, Justin loves it. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. Um, uh, now, I've got a, a, a mix of different things. So depending on how, how, how bright it is, if it's raining, et cetera, um, and there's even little things of, 
you know, I've got little holes in them to help with ventilation and stuff whenever it does get muggy. And there's a lot of different custom things that have happened. And uh, the people at isports.com.au have just completely, um, I guess, customized every single one. So I'm very fortunate to have someone like that, that I've been able to reach out to and, and create a bit of a relationship that helps me out with them. But I think last time I counted, it was maybe 45 different lenses, which is about, yeah, about 22 different pairs. So. <laughs> mm. What about a different color, Mason? Can you run with a red, a yellow or a, or a pink? Um, I could if I wanted to, but I'm not going to give you all that kind of ammunition, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, no it's, I usually play with one that's a bit darker and then one that's a bit lighter just because of the surgeries and stuff. My pupil doesn't dilate um, like it used to, so it allows too much light in. So my left, um, my left lens is always usually a bit darker than my right one if you ever look at photos and stuff. And tell us about becoming an Australian citizen during the week. It's great news for yourself. Uh, your family must be so excited. Dual citizenship. We're just showing the, the picture. Craig McRae's in there as well. Yeah, it was it was a beautiful day. Like, and credit goes to Collingwood Football Club. They put the whole thing together. And um, Sally Cap, who's a, uh, the first female board member of Collingwood, was also there to, to induct everyone in as the uh, as the host of everything, which was awesome. And it was just kind of this full circle moment. Um, Craig McCray was one of the first people I've met in Australia. Darcy Moore was one of the first people I ever met in Australia, and both of them were there with with the family and a lot of my friends and everything else. And um, yeah, it just means a lot. I think I've been here for eight years. I've committed a certain amount of time in my life and a huge chunk of my life to to this country. And to be able to sit there and say at the end of the day you're a citizen, and you know this this uh, this culture kind of I guess induct you in as their own is um, something I don't take lightly. I think it's um, something we all probably take for granted, the freedoms we have and, you know, the abilities and the opportunities we have given the place we're born at or the place that we're living at. So uh, for myself now to call myself a dual citizen, uh, my mom's really worried about me becoming full Australian. But um, as a dual citizen, it's, uh, it's quite an accomplishment and I guess a bit of uh, reward for effort for putting so much time of your life into one country. Mason, tell us about Nick and Josh. Yesterday I thought they were fantastic. Uh, they're very, very hard matchups. We tried to go with them off half. Well, Nick was playing off half back, and you've got to play a defensive forward on him. Uh, they're going to be two players that the Collingwood Football Club supporters are going to love for about 15 years, I think. Yeah, those, those two guys have definitely stepped up in the, the year. I mean, even Nick, Nick Dekos last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, slotting or getting that tackle one and then slotting the one from the corner. He had some big moments. and. To think a 19-year-old is uh, is one guy we're going to for big moments. It's pretty wild, but it shows uh, it shows his capability and his ability. I think everyone going into the draft last year knew how good he was, and he even would come in, you know, years before and you know train with Dakes and everything else or Josh. And you always kind of saw how good he was, and you always kind of was hoping that he would kind of come into the team. And now that he's here, he's uh, he's definitely a, a firecracker for all of us and a spark for the team whenever it comes to one, uh, one his passion for the game and uh, two his passion for the club. So. He's a, he, both of them are great people to have around. Josh is having a phenomenal year. I know everyone kind of focuses on Nick because he is one of the new guys in the competition, but Josh is having a, a phenomenal year on his own standards, and um, he probably gets kind of somewhat looked uh, behind his brother, but I think he's having just uh, as good a year, if not better. Couldn't quite get them in the votes. I thought long and hard about these votes, but it was all North Melbourne for me. David oh. Uniac, easily the oh, best no. player on the ground. Oh, no. Larky kick five. What? Mackay was awesome. Oh as was Todd Goldstein. So I thought about Pendlebury and Adams, but they were the best four players on the ground. But Mason, you are loaded with Lou's prize pack. We'll start with a luxury escapes, a gift card from them. It's your one-stop shop for the world's best escapes, experiences and flights at great prices, handpicked by experts. Discover a better way to travel at luxuryescapes.com. The Callaway golf bag plus a tour cap is worn by the world number one. John Rahm. There's a Travis Matthews pack as well, including the perfect polo shorts and pants for every occasion. The Aquila shoes, pair of those, premium quality footwear since 1958. That's the Bar Fridge. Custom design one of those. Bar Fridge is Australia. Keep your drinks cool in a fridge with your name on it. The Rick's Eyewear, a pair of Rick's Eyewear. Use the code SundayFootyShow at rickseyewear.com.au for express shipping and a 20% discount on eyewear and apparel. And Lordo's friends at Platform Order. 28 will look after Order. you. Our favourite pub right here in Docklands. Mason, I have to apologise for Kane. He's not onto the Collingwood juggernaut yet. No votes for any Collingwood player. How do you feel about that? It's a bit of slap <laughs> in the face, isn't it? Uh, it's a typical game. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't be afraid to use the word finals. I once said I was the best player in the game for 10 weeks, and people still talk about it now. So good luck for the rest of the season, and congratulations on becoming an Australian citizen. Thanks for having me on, y'all. Awesome. Mason Cox there. The Pies well on their way to playing finals and top four. You need to get on board.
No, I'm, I'm, I, feel, I feel like you're not on board. No, I, I could not have been more impressed. To go from 17th, as we said, to the position that they're couldn't in Couldn't feel the voting during the week. I, well, who would you have had in? I watched that game pretty closely. Boomer, was that uh, harsh perfect. or fair? Yeah, fair. Yeah, I, I thought, absolutely. Don't you have to be a North Melbourne person? Who, who do you think? <laughs> He's on the start. Damo as well. I wouldn't have had Todd Goldstein in there. He, he's, the other Ruckman kicked three goals as well. When he, a couple Cameron. of those goals weren't yeah. from the ruck. Though. But I thought Josh Dacos was, across the day, Collingwood's best player. Okay. Mm. All right.